This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. I'm here right outside of Portland, Oregon at this cool reptile show, and I want to start off by showing this super dwarf reticulated python. When people think of reticulated pythons, oftentimes they think of these 18 or 20 foot monster snakes, but the truth is this is an adult proven four year old reticulated python. It's a super dwarf, and again, this is as big as it's gonna get. Now, it's pretty impressive to see a reticulated python that maxes out at a size like this, but something else that's really cool that I have to show you guys is take a look at this guy here. This is a three day old baby super dwarf reticulated python. It is crazy. Look at how small that is. It absolutely looks more like a carpet python than a reticulated python. I didn't realize that super dwarfs hatch this small. Oh, this is really cool to see something like this. Let's go ahead and take a look at what else is out here at this reptile show. My name is Brian Bartrek. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week I'll be in Hillsbury, Oregon at the Pacific Northwest Reptile and Exotic Animal Show. You're watching Snake Bites. So I'm here with Annalisa and Jada. These girls came in and are super cute and super excited about reptiles. And Annalisa, tell me what you said your favorite snake of mine was. I'll button over me some um, sunshine. Sunshine, that's right. And you know that we can't bring sunshine to these shows. So what I did was I have one just like sunshine for you guys. Here you go, Jada, you hold on to it too. So tell me, how long have you guys liked reptiles? I, my mom, and my older sister uh, have always been allergic to dogs and cats. Really? So that's when my dad, he's starting to be a breeder. He, um, he, he, he started this idea to be, um, to have reptiles. Nice. And so how, how many snakes do you have? We ten. have ten. You have ten snakes? Oh my gosh, what kind? We have pied ball, um, nice. albino, and super pastel, a lesser. <laughs> two lessers. Two, two lessers. lessers. <laughs> and ball is, pythons. How awesome is that, right? So tell me, I mean, what do you think about this snake? This is an albino Burmese, just like Sunshine. You, you think awesome. it's cool? Hey, how you doing? It's, <laughs> Hi, Jada. I really <laughs> like its um, color. Is it pretty heavy? Not really. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. Well, you've got the easy end. Annalisa here has got the worst end. She's <laughs> holding all the muscle. Well, I tell you what, thank you guys so much for being a part of things, and it's so great to see you guys love reptiles so much. Just keep that passion for animals, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, good job, guys. What we have here is a Mortlet's crocodile. These guys are from Central America, and this guy's probably about three or four years old and came in as a rescue. Now these guys can eventually max out at nine or 10 foot. So they're relatively sizable, but they're not one of the monsters. And what's amazing about all the crocodiles, unlike alligators, is the way that they have their teeth. They actually intertwine almost like a saw blade, but these Morlet's teeth, wow. Just look at those chompers on them. When this thing gets eight or nine foot, you aren't gonna wanna be on the business end, but wow, what a gorgeous animal. Well, I gotta be honest with you, this is certainly the strangest animal that I've ever encountered at a reptile show. This has to be a Bactrin camel. Now these are a little bit more interesting than the majority of the camels that you think of when you see these guys. These guys are from Mongolia and they're actually relatively rare in the wild. There's only about 800 of these that actually exist and probably only a couple thousand in captivity in America. And of course what makes these a little bit different than the normal camels that we're used to seeing is the fact that they have this really wooly look to them which is really cool and of course they have two humps, which really means that it's kind of hard to ride them. Although, to me, I look at it and think, this looks like a pretty nice saddle to sit in, but I'm told they don't make good riding camels. And of course, they're much smaller than the other camels as well, and they don't really serve a lot of purpose, so you don't see nearly as many of these domesticated, unlike some of the more common camels that there's millions of them in captivity. But regardless, just being around these camels like this is pretty cool, and they actually love peanuts, but. Right now, as always, animals will sometimes be animals, but how cool is that? Oh my gosh, just look at how cute this little guy is. His name is Chester, and of course he's a two and a half year old male ring-tailed lemur. 
Now lemurs are kind of a primate, but they're really called a prosimian. And of course, these guys were made famous by the movie Madagascar because that's where they're from. And unfortunately, all of the lemur species, including the ringtail, are pretty heavily endangered. Although the ringtails are probably the least of the ones, unlike a lot of the rough lemurs. But these guys are mainly endangered because of deforestation over in Madagascar. Now this is actually an inhabitant of the Zany Zoo. Their job is to go out and educate people about the amazing wildlife out there and Chester is an amazing ambassador of that just look how cute that little bugger is look at those eyes that's awesome oh, take a look at this one this is another little animal ambassador for Zany Zoo this happens to be a prehensile tail porcupine but this guy is a little feisty little monkey here. Now most people think that porcupines will actually throw their quills, but the truth is, is they don't do that at all. They can back up and the quills will come out and stick into you. These guys are from South America. But one of the more interesting thing about the prehensile tail porcupines are the reproductive in the way that they take care of the babies. It's one of those animals that you almost wonder how they survive because this girl right here, which is a breedable size, will only have one baby. But what's interesting is that she'll crawl down from inside the trees where they're gonna live with this prehensile tail. And trust me, it's pretty scruffy. They're gonna climb down and they're gonna have one baby a year. Now what's interesting is that the babies are born without quills, but their eyes are open and they're ready to attack the wild. But the mothers only come down to take care of them once every four hours. And other than that, these guys are on their own to fend for themselves. So it's pretty amazing that an animal that doesn't take care of its babies and only has one baby per year can still survive. This is quite an amazing animal with a really cool, amazing story. Oh, I am so happy that I have an opportunity to play with a bush baby. You guys may know that one of my tattoos is of a bush baby on my African animal sleeve. Now this happens to be a greater bush baby, which is a little bit more common than the lesser bush babies in captivity at least. Now these guys have an interesting story because in the wild they scream and that's the way that they got their name bush baby. Believe it or not, some tribes in Africa actually believe that these guys will go in and steal their babies. So when they see them in the wild, they see those bright nocturnal eyes and that scream and they think what happened was these guys came into the tribe and stole their babies and are actually killing them in the wild. Of course, it's a complete myth and those big, amazing eyes are because they're so nocturnal. These guys are amazingly cute and I tell you what, this is the first time I've been able to play with one. And I tell you what, it wasn't a disappointment. I'm so happy I had this opportunity. You guys know that I'm an absolute crocodilian nut. And this girl, Allie here, is an American alligator. And she's actually been an ambassador for wildlife for over 20 years. She originated from the Knoxville Zoo and then ended up here where she travels all over the country teaching people about the wonders of wildlife. Just handling Allie kind of makes me miss home a little bit with my boy RJ. But again, females are gonna stay much smaller. RJ is certainly gonna get a lot bigger than this. But it's just so cute and it's cool to see super puppy dog tame alligators. Oh my gosh, just take a look at this beauty here. This happens to be Sunshine, that red-eared slider, but not just a normal red-eared slider, it's an albino. And these guys are obviously a recessive mutation, just basically meaning that you can breed these together and get more albinos, or of course, if you breed it to a normal, they're all gonna come out normal with the trait being carried, calling heterozygous, of course. But these albinos are absolutely gorgeous. You don't see big ones like this often, so it's really cool to take a look at them. And of course, these are aquatic terrapins, unlike the tortoises that live on land. Wow, such a cool animal. I'm so glad I got to meet Sunshine. So guys, you may look at this and say, that's a pretty cool snake, but the truth is, this is a European legless lizard. That's right, it's actually a lizard and not a snake. But of course, it doesn't have any legs, which is kind of an interesting evolutionary standard. Maybe the link between lizards and snakes, right? But some of the things that really separate 
These guys from Snakes are number one, they have the external ears, and man, they just move weird. You see how it just kind of flips around? This is just such a bizarre animal. And again, they don't have the ability to remove their jaws or, or have their jaws unhinge a little bit. Man, this thing is just so goofy. Look at it just flipping around, just trying to get away from me. I don't know if I'm freaked out by this or not. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. But these guys are mainly insectivores, but they will eat little rodents, of course. And they don't have the tongue of a snake either. That's the other thing that really separates these guys. They're gonna have more of a skink type tongue. And one of the things I think is the most crazy about legless lizards is believe it or not, from here down is all tail. That's right, with a snake this size, the tail would start way down here, and this guy starts way up here. <laughs> oh my God, this is just the freakiest animal spinning around like that. But again, this is a way a legless litter is gonna move. Man, this thing is awesome, but definitely a little freaky. Wow, now this is one incredible incredibly gorgeous animal. This happens to be an Argentine high white blue tegu. Now it's only about eight months old. It's gonna get quite a bit larger, but the Argentine tegus are actually really docile compared to say the Colombians. Now these are completely carnivorous animals. They're gonna eat stuff like dog food, rodents, and the occasional hard boiled egg. And again, they're gonna get pretty massive. So you're gonna to have to have quite a bit of space to keep something like this. But I tell you what, they can actually be trained a little bit too. They're a highly intelligent lizard. And I know a lot of people that keep these guys that will literally even come to their name for food. They're an amazing prehistoric looking animal. And when they get bigger, those jaws right here get really huge and they get a tremendous amount of character. But again, as long as they feel comfortable, these guys, are 100% little dinosaur pets. What we have here is a pretty special animal, certainly one that I've never seen before. It's a three-way hybrid, believe it or not, between an Argus, a Flavi, and a Goldeye. Now that's pretty cool, and it's eight years old, so this is about as big as it gets. And as a lot of people know, the Argus are pretty high-tempered, so it's really cool to see a sizable monitor that is carrying a super cool temperament. And again, being this size, it's really not that big of an animal, but like all monitor lizards, they're highly intelligent, and they certainly need a tremendous amount of room and care as well as interaction. This guy has been a true joy to see, and I can honestly say I doubt if I'll ever see an animal like this again the rest of my life. I've always had an absolute passion for these guys. These are the Brazilian false water cobra, sometimes called the Brazilian smooth snake. They're an absolutely gorgeous animal, and they happen to be rear fanged venomous. And that just basically means that their delivery system for venom is in the back of their jaws instead of in the front where they have those fangs. Now typically they have to really gnaw on you to deliver any kind of venom into that bite. But unfortunately, these guys do have a tendency to grab on and love to gnaw. Now this animal seems to be pretty chill right now, but I'm gonna be careful. If you ever do get envenomated by these guys, it's not the end of the world. You're not gonna die. There's certainly never been a fatality for an animal like this, but there is some localized swelling, some nausea, and let's just face it, probably not gonna end as well as you'd like it to end, but it's not that bad, really. These are an extremely large snake. They can get nine foot plus, but just look at how beautiful they are. And the reason that they call them false water cobras is because this part of their neck right here will flatten up and they'll come up and flare up just like a cobra. Not quite as extreme, but the same type of thing. You can see they're a highly intelligent snake the whole time just kind of checking me out, trying to figure out what's going on. And I think that's why I've always loved the false water cobras. These guys are really cool. You don't see them around too often, so it was a real pleasure to see them at a reptile show. And of course, I work with them personally at BHP. These are the Indian sand boas, or sometimes called the smooth sand boa. But this is a sunset mutation of it, which is really cool. Now, the Indian sand boas are endemic to the drier parts of India, Afghanistan, Iran, and even parts of Iraq. And they're the largest of the sand boa species. Now, typically, these guys are born orange with black banding on 
their tails. And as they get older, they turn kind of a solid brown color. Now they'll get up to four feet in length, so they're a pretty big sandbar. But what's cool about the sunsets is they're polygenically bred to stay orange, and you can continue to see the banding on them, which is really cool. Now this is an F2 version, which means that every generation is just gonna get bigger and better and more beautiful. One of the things that sometimes these are called are two-headed sand snakes, and you can see how the head and the tail almost looks like the exact same animal. Now as a defense mechanism, believe it or not, these guys will tuck their head in, raise that tail up and wag it like that. And that basically means that predators will think that that's its head. And if it's gonna be attacked, it's gonna have its tail attack instead of its head, protecting itself from any real danger. These guys are super cool and I'm just excited that I came across one of them. So what a bunch of amazing animals we came across today. Those mammals were super cool and a bunch of cool reptiles, but more importantly, there was a tremendous amount of really cool people. I've just absolutely fell in love with Oregon. I hope you guys have too. It's been an awesome day. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. What an amazing time I had here up in Oregon. What a cool place to visit. I can guarantee I'm gonna be back. And as always, I was Facebook and tweeting and Instagram my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at SnakeBitesTV and on Instagram at SnakeBites.tv. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.